Oh, man. So if you were to describe our lives right now in one word, what would it be? Chaotic. Chaotic. I was going to say crazy, so basically the same thing. Just, it's hard to use a negative word because like even though so many negative things are happening, at the same time, there's like a lot of positives. It's just hard when it's like, I don't know, are you supposed to always just have a positive outlook when thing after thing just unnecessarily happens negative? I don't know. It's not it's just like people die, like that happens. But then after they die, it's so flipping hard to like get through the process of like after death of dealing with the state stuff. Like, I don't know. It's just not something that like it's not something you think about and it feels unnecessarily hard. I mean it is unnecessarily hard. Yeah. Would you say this is like kind of like the lowest point we've been at? I guess it depends on like what point of view you're looking at from. We're going by like, I mean, there's been time where we were pretty much financially down to scraping by. Um, right, right when we got back from New York and we moved in with my dad, and it's just we're at that same spot now with just more responsibility. Yeah, I guess that's a big thing too. Is like. We didn't, have, we didn't have Bobby. We didn't have Bobby. We didn't have rent. We didn't have businesses. Like, yeah. if we didn't have money, you know, it was okay. We didn't have big bills. Like, the worst thing that would happen if we didn't have money is that we just wouldn't buy things. When we were, we were broke, essentially, at a time in life where it's expected, you're expected to be broke. Like either coming right off a move or the transition from like I mean I was done with schooling but you could work continue your schooling in New York like we were in that transition phase of finding your kind of like post schooling career yeah and I think that there was also like there was a future in that like we knew that we could live with your dad and that that was stable you we both got like jobs at UPS fairly quickly so like we were making some money and then I knew that I was gonna eventually apply for a dietitian job and you know within the next six months to be able to get that where now it's like I don't know where we're gonna be at in one month <laughs> let alone like six <sighs> that's the hardest part for me is like I know this month we skipped some bills and now I know, like, well, last month. And so this month, now we have double of all those bills. It's not like you just, like, can take a break a month and then you can get back on track with your regular payments. Now we're back a month. And so it's just so much scarier because, like, if we can't catch up, then, I mean, it just keeps compiling. And, like, it's just these really big bills without a certainty of income. All surrounding money. Oh my God, I fucking hate money. But like, like every other, like if you take away the aspect of money mm -hmm. out of our lives, we have like, I mean, we, we have, we're educated. We have a family. We have a decent support system we have a good place to live we have yeah i mean in, in like bobby's doing well and she's healthy and we have opportunities yeah i mean like there's so much like there's so much good that just gets taken away not taken away but by the, by the burden of money but yeah it does like i think mentally you can't overcome that feeling of the day-to-day -day burden of money and I just hate it because like we work so... The burden so... of not having money. Yeah. <laughs> the burden of money. It's so hard to have money. It's not just us. It's like so many people work really hard to, for one reason or another, not have enough money. Yeah. And... I don't know. It's just... 
just not paying. <laughs> I think that's why I get really hung up with like the sentiment of like the Robin Hood kind of way of thinking of steal from the rich, give to the poor, or like, you know, the rich should pay more taxes or the poor should get more support. Like I get really hung up in that because like do the rich people really work that much fucking harder than the poor people? I mean, they might take more risk and they, some might work harder, but then there's also like the poor person that's, you know, working really hard to get out of their situation. And that's hard. Like, I don't know. It is easier to hate money when you don't have it. I don't know. It's not even money itself. It's like the idea of money. It's not like, I don't hate, like if someone were to hand me money, I'm like, no, I hate this. Like, it's not what I'm saying. It's like, um, the the concept of this one thing that just separates so many people and not even just from like lifestyles it's like life or death for some people it's i mean it's a driving factor for people it's a motivator for people it's a um it's a way to separate people it's a way to segregate people it causes partnerships it causes separations it causes it's it's a lot the root of everything and it's just like i think the idea that rings like sounds the best to me is the idea of like some universal basic income where at the very bottom like poverty looks like your basic needs are met and then you can work beyond that where i don't think that's what i mean that's not where we're at in america no and i feel like that would be more realistic if people were also more sustainable on their own but like as long as like if your job is to go to a factory or something like that where you're not like planning your own food and like your job is basically like to sustain your life it's to go to that factory to make enough money to sustain your life i just think that people would still work though because like as soon as you have your basic needs met you're gonna want a little bit more you're gonna want to buy something new. You're gonna wanna go on a vacation. You're gonna want things. And so I really believe people would keep working. Like the people that would quote unquote like abuse it are already probably not working. And so it wouldn't change that. And it would just be like, you would take all of the red tape around getting help. Because I mean, how many times did we get tonight food stamps? Three? For just information. Like it was just logistics. It wasn't that we didn't qualify. Um, and like that's three fucking months that like we needed help buying food that we didn't get it and like you said luckily we have enough support system that you know we made it and there was definitely lots of ramen noodle nights but mm -hmm. we ate mm -hmm. um it's not also like in our current position it's not like we were doing these jobs like we we're opening businesses and stuff like that so that we have enough to be on the bottom all of, i mean we're still Everything we've put into place is to get us away from the bottom, like the lower echelon. I just think that like the bottom should be a little higher than where it is. I think that's the biggest thing is like, I mean, there's a lot to talk about with money and we could talk a lot about it, but <laughs> I just said the same thing twice. I'm a little tired. Hi, we're Chris and Emily. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, we're Chris and Emily. Welcome to our YouTube channel where we talk about life, business, family, and our overall, what did you call it? Chaotic, crazy, unconventional life. So how did we get here? Where we're not paying bills and can't get food stamps and denied bankruptcy and like literally just in that perfect sweet spot of poor where you can't get help <laughs> it's, it's a nice place to be it's a nice place to hang out so we met in culinary school in the library um started dating november of 2011 and yeah we just kind of spent the first year being a normal couple dating and then we moved down to bowling green to continue going to college at western where it was not a good idea for me I was pretty, I was done with school, but I guess I wanted to, wanted to stick with him. Yeah, stick with, stick with him, so I came down with her, um, got through most of our, uh, 
my degree. Emily continued hers, got a uh, internship or a, what would you call yeah, it? Yeah, it was a dietetic internship. Dietetic internship yeah. up in New York City. So we moved to New York City for a year and a half. Yeah, that was fun. It's crazy to think that the year and a half we spent in New York was like half as long as the three years we spent in Bowling Green. Like in my mind, it was the same length of time. So, right, I we lived in Manhattan for a year, Brooklyn for a little, like four months, I think. Um, and I worked in almost every borough. Uh, my internship was kind of all over the place. Chris worked at a bakery. We met some really cool friends, ate some really cool food. Overall, um, we just aren't cut out to live in New York City. It's very different than Kentucky and it's kind of a hard life. And so we moved back uh, as a little bit after I finished my internship. Yeah, we moved in with my dad. Um, found some guaranteed jobs right when we moved back. Started making some money. Um, and we eventually found a, uh, a job where she could, uh, where she was using her degree. Uh, I was still working at UPS. I got a job at UPS, but uh, while we were doing that, uh, the house next door to my dad's went on the market, and then he's like, let's go for it. And I was like, we're not going to get it, so you can go for it if you want. I had my dietitian job at this point, so that definitely helped us. Well, we got it. So we got the house. We moved into the house next door to my dad's and decided to have a baby. <laughs> yeah, so we decided to have a baby. First try, got pregnant. Um, all of this too before we were married, which is like, we were fine with, we had been dating for like six or seven years at this point and we were just kind of like ready to move on with life, not like super concerned about the whole marriage thing. But my parents weren't like super happy about us having a baby, not being married. And I also just figured it would be the easiest thing for like legal reasons to go ahead and get married. I know we're so romantic. Um, so I got pregnant in February. Chris proposed in March. We went to the courthouse with my parents and his dad in August. Um, got married. At the same courthouse that my parents got married at. Yeah which is really cool. And we got a picture that was just like theirs that they took when they were there. Um, and then Bobby was born in November and that just started a whole new life for us with a baby. November, 2018, that's where we're at now. <laughs> Multiple attempts of starting our own businesses. Yeah. So, I mean, we did for a little bit. We had about six months of just new parenthood before we decided that we wanted to go off and start businesses, which is just, yeah, that was a good idea. I'm sure one day I will be looking back and be like, I'm so glad I did all of this. But we're just in the phase of business ownership now that it's really hard. Like they say, it's hard in the beginning. Yeah, we're in the hard part. And so it's just hard. <laughs> the parts where every day it's easy just to be like, all right, I'm done. I'm giving up. I would just be so much easier, like, in this moment to go work a nine to five. Like, I don't think I would want that for the rest of my life, but there are so many days every day that, like, I wake up and just, like, if I could just go to work, guarantee get paid, like, that would be so amazing and so easy. Um, but, I mean, I, I would burn out on that eventually. Like, I know that business ownership is for me. It's just we're in the hard part, so... May, Bobby was about, May, she'd be what, six months old? Yeah. So May, Bobby was about six months old. I started, just barely like started working as a online nutrition coach. My practice eventually evolved into an actual practice where I work like as a dietitian and like accept interns and all that good stuff. But I did start as an online nutrition coach per a business coach that I paid way too much money for. Um, that was kind of our first step into business ownership very low overhead i was working from home i you know probably other than my business coach have like four to five hundred expenses dollars of expenses a month so pretty easy business to kind of get my feet wet in yeah i uh started air duct cleaning with my sister's fiance uh he had already started a business um 
doing that and I was attempting to partner with him and build the business um, and was doing that for about four months or so, four or five months and then that's when we decided to open up a restaurant. Editing Emily here and I just realized we kind of skipped over like a really big part of our life and that was Chris's dad passing away which we were obviously talking about business here so I, I think we just kind of forgot about that big part of our life but it was a big motivating factor in us starting that restaurant because we did dedicate it to him because at this point we were honestly at like the point where I remember even saying it it's like we're kind of already this far in the hole why not just like go farther like it doesn't seem like good logic when I say it out loud but in the moment you're like, you know what? We are in debt. We're not making money. If we open up a restaurant, we'll just be in debt and not make money. Like, it, how does that really change your situation? Um, which, I mean, I guess it only just intensified it. It's just stressful. It's a lot of work. And we, of course, like me being the overly optimistic person that I am, thought that we would actually be making some money from the restaurant in the first year. Um, and we have the business to potentially be able to do that. It just didn't work out from the perspective of like equipment breaking that we paid a down payment for from like the previous restaurant owner, which just kind of sucks because we feel like we double paid for it. We paid for this equipment and had to pay to fix it all. Um, but major equipment breaking and then just the regular lessons of being like a first time restaurant owner that you kind of have to learn the hard way. Yeah, but it's the, those are the hardships that would be expected with opening a restaurant in particular. Um, I mean, granted, we were optimistic, but we still are. I mean, it's still, it's very early. The restaurant's still really early in its life, so. We opened in June of this year, so yeah. Um, so that's what got us to here, and I think that for some people, like who are watching this, which if you are watching this, thank you very much. I am so happy that you took the time to get to know us a little bit. Uh, but for some people watching this, you are probably wondering like, how the heck does this person or these people keep making decisions that are so risky when they don't have like that much backing? Um, and I really feel like it's one of those things you don't understand until you get into it. I feel like when we got married, when we were dating, when we got married, I would call myself a very financially sound person. Like we weren't in any debt other than the mortgage and student loans when I first started my business two and a half years ago. It's crazy how fast that can change. But I'm a pretty rational person and like pretty financially savvy and a few things I definitely got sold on because I'm a little bit gullible and really optimistic, like I said. Uh, but a lot of it is just like, you are almost like paying your dues for the future. And at a certain point, I really honestly believe this will all be worth it. It's like we're in so much debt, it's insane. Um, but I still feel like it'll be worth it. Like I, you hear those stories of the business owners who filed bankruptcy, the business owners who had zero dollars or went into a lot of debt and then they ended up making it big. Like, I think that's what motivates me to not freak out and quit when we're in this crazy situation. Yeah. And like, I mean, we could, we could have lived a more traditional, quote unquote traditional lifestyle, which was just get the nine to fives, have a babysitter for Bobby, go to work every day, come home. And like, I mean, there's days where that still seems appealing, but I mean, it's not like we can do it now anyways. But I mean, there's something with like owning your own business or something like that. I mean, that seems like, especially when we were, when we started everything, we were in our late twenties, early thirties. That doesn't seem the, the time to just become complacent. Because I feel like that's what you do when you start your more traditional lifestyle. Is you you become com like complacent. There's nothing kind of like driving you or testing you or 
Like, there's nothing to overcome when when things are easy, or when things are traditional, or when things aren't risky. Um, uh, that's not to say that like everyone who works nine to five is like a super complacent person. I think you and I just both felt that way for ourselves because like a lot of people it really works like the traditional method really works for them and stability like feels good and then certainty feels terrible and then i mean honestly uncertainty feels pretty bad sometimes but i when i was working my nine to five i would literally like chris was working nights at the time and i would just be at home by myself and like cry over the fact that like i didn't want to do this for the rest of my life but i didn't see a way out and you know every person is different and i think you and me are both just people who thrive off of the challenge of a business so that's us in a nutshell obviously we skimmed over a lot of details but you know on this channel we'll just kind of show our lives of how we live a bit unconventionally and um maybe talk about business um Maybe talk about food, probably definitely talk about food. Uh, that's kind of our thing. I'm a you know dietitian and we're both in the restaurant industry. So um, I would love it if you guys stuck around and, you know, pulled us along. <laughs> Jesus. 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 Is that you said? I said Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. Fuck. <laughs> I just feel like. I don't want to offend people by using Jesus and God a lot. And fuck. <laughs> well, that's less offensive, I think. <laughs> but in the same. I'm just, I guess. Oh, God, fuck. <laughs>